Hello and welcome to Ensemble Learning. I am Kashif Murtaza, instructor at AI Sciences, and in this video I'm going to explain uh, one particular type of ensemble learning called bagging. Uh, but wait a second, uh, because bagging is one type of ensemble learning, we need to first know what it is ensemble or ensemble learning, particularly in machine learning. And only then we will go and see this particular type of ensembling, which is called bagging. And we will also at the end see a famous algorithm that is used mostly uh, in several machine learning tasks that actually use bagging. So let's dive in and see what is ensemble. Um, in machine learning, one of the one of the challenging problems, one problem is to select a model out of several models. So there are a lot of models out there. For example, let me let me just focus on classification uh, first. Let's list some of the classifiers. Let's say K N N. That's K nearest neighbor classifier. That's one classifier. Another is let's say support vector machines. Um, maybe another classifier as logistic regression. And there are several other classifiers. There are several other. Let's just focus on these, two, these three. It turns out that there is no best classifier at the end of the day for every data set. Um, which, which means for a given data set, you may have to choose one of the, one of the models that, that, that best suits on, the, on, the, on your data or the new data. And this model selection is really difficult and um, I mean time taking and sometimes the ideal model, finding out an ideal model by cross validation and stuff like that is really, really expensive. An alternative way is that given a pool of models, just think about classification, given a pool of models, that's a KNN, SVM and Spore Vector Machine, why don't we actually train um, or use all these models on our training data. So that's the training data. And let's use a KNN for it. A KNN. Um, use the same training data and train, let's say, SVM. Uh, use the same training data and let's say, uh, build a logistic regression model on that. And then um, somehow combine these different models to make one model, sometimes called the meta model at the end. This seems really intuitive and um, maybe a right thing to do when we do not know which model is the best. Uh, and it turns out, it turns out that depending upon, depending upon the choices of um, different models, depending upon whether we are using the whole data set or a subsets of data, and depending upon the way we are combining the different models together to make one meta model, it all goes to ensemble learning. And different ensemble learning techniques, they actually vary based on um, making the way, making the, the way they use the sample data, whether they use subsets or the whole training data for each model, the way they use um, different kind of models, whether all the models are homogeneous or heterogeneous, Heterogeneous means the different kind of models like KNN, SVM, logistic regression, they are different models. Uh, maybe we use KNN for a particular subset, KNN for another subset, KNN for another subset, that's kind of a heterogeneous mod homogeneous model. And then uh, whether we are treating all the classifiers independently or parallel, or whether we are uh, training the classifiers in a particular order or sequential way, and finally, how to combine different classifiers. All the techniques of ensemble learning they actually vary based on these kind of criteria. One important thing is the choice of number of models to use. And it turns out this is a uh, hyperparameter. I mean, it, is, um, it, it has been shown recently that um, there is an ideal number of models to be used in ensemble learning. Um, and going below or above that number may deteriorate the performance. Uh, but in practice, people use um, some rules, rules of thumb or make cross-validate to find out the number of um, number of components or number of the models to be used in ensemble learning. So take home for this slide, ensemble learning, using several models and combining them, combining those, and that whole thing becomes one model, that whole thing eventually becomes a model, and that is called ensemble learning. 
let's dive in and see in in different type of techniques in ensemble learning what is special about bagging so let's see that in bagging sometimes known as bootstrap aggregating what happens is um, so let let me list certain things that are special to bagging number one um, you use subsets of data subsets of data for different models so for example that's a model let's say classifier one um, I'm just using the example of classification the whole th the whole thing works for uh, regression as well um, so subset of data um, so different subsets uh, this is one subset this is another subset of data maybe you decide a particular percentage let's say 50% or 60% of data uh, for subset creation we generate subsets of data and the way we generate subset of data is with replacement so with replacement let me tell you what that means replacement if for example this point let me highlight this point if that point is let's say point number one let's say in certain index this is point number one then this point number one can appear in the first subset for the first model and it can appear in the second subset in the for the second model and it can appear I mean it is allowed to resample this for different subset on top of that the same uh, point can be resampled for the same subset as well uh, and that's particularly the case why it is called a bag data structure rather than a subset because if we treat this thing as a subset a set does not contain duplicate entries and that's why people call it a bag because bag normally bags normally are multisets now okay now um, the 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 real question is um, let's say we do this sampling make different bags um, each data point is allowed to appear in different bags um, and each data point is allowed to appear in the same bag multiple times that's fine that's that's okay with bagging that's uh, one kind of distinction of bagging ensembling bagging ensemble learner with respect to or with respect to the rest of the um, ensemble learning techniques second um, on each uh, on each of this bag a particular model a particular model is trained uh, so let's say that's uh, that's kind of let's say KNN with some K value on a different subset you get another KNN uh, on another subset you may use another KNN that's the most basic and original form of bagging that all the models they belong to the same category of models for example all are KNNs and if uh, you're doing regression then all are the same regression models however in general um, in general uh, classifier 1 can be any classifier like SVM and classifier 2 can be a different classifier maybe like lo logistic regression and so on so ge in general settings all these models they can be different but in the most basic setting all the models are same looking at the different subsets of data and then finally this KNN will make a prediction on a particular data point let's say Y1 or YI on ith point um, this also so let me call YI for KNN um, then uh, for for YI1 for model 1 this makes let's say the prediction YI2 and this makes the prediction let's say YI3 and then finally what happens is um, we need to combine these predictions together to make a final prediction and in the very basic form of uh, bagging um, the combination is just the voting and in case of regression the combination is simply the averaging so just average out yi1 plus yi2 plus yi3 and divide by 3 that's the average for um, one particular uh, property of this bagging is that all the models they are weight equally um, one model is not preferred over the other when combining uh, these kind of models but wait a second uh, we are discussing that uh, bagging works on um, on on subsets why subsets why not the whole data sets there is a reason to that and that reason relates bagging with with overfitting so let me just um, go and uh, go to the next slide and and show you the impact of subsets and also how the bagging is robust to overfitting so consider for example several data points and consider right now the task is regression 
So we have several data points. Let's say all these red data points, the feature is only one feature. Let's say this is feature X, and this is the target Y, and these are all the training data that is available. Um, in, in this blue bluish kind of color, let's say the first model subsamples um, only these points that are in, in, in the same color, like bluish color. And you, for example, fit a regression model that looks like it overfits on the subset. Here I'm again using the term subset. Let me use the term bag because uh, um, maybe one point is picked many times in the same in the same bag. But even if the point is picked so many times, the, the model will stay roughly like this, the same. So next, what we really do is, um, let's say the second model is again the same regression model, but it looks at the different subset like these green points and it fits its regression to these green points. And it looks like the, the model is seeing to the subset is overfitting at that subset, which is fine, that makes sense. It actually is doing that. Now consider a third model which actually sees all these black points um, and fits a regression model on that which looks like overfitting on that. But what happens if we average all these models together? And this uh, kind of funny kind of curve is actually the average model I've just drawn. You can see the average model is much more smooth and less overfitted to every of the data points. So what happens is that's your feature space. Um, different models, they look at the different portions of your feature space, different portions, and may learn the local structure um, of that uh, kind of subset or uh, that kind of portion or region of the feature space. And that may lead to overfitting for the classifier for that particular uh, local region, thereby learning a lot about the local structure of that region. But if we have several classifiers that are randomly looking at different uh, portions and learning the local structures, all the variation or, or overfitting that is caused by the local structure is will be actually uh, averaged out significantly when we average out all the predictions together, thereby making the less overfitted or a low variance model at the end. And that's primary reason why bagging actually focuses on uh, subsets of data and several other ensemble learning techniques, they actually focus on uh, subsets of data. Although some are, some actually look, some actually take into the account all the training data, but several of those including uh, bagging actually looks at the subset, which makes much more sense that it avoids overfitting at the time of combination because the variances or overfitting factors, they actually are averaged out, um, yeah. So um, that's, um, that's about it, um, uh, about the overfitting for uh, bagging. Um, you can also see that um, the, the averaged model or the combined model performs well um, in general uh, or the generalization, the performance on the test data, it looks like it is much better than any of these individual models, so combining makes sense. But, um, it, it really turns out that in practice, uh, bagging avoids overfitting, but it really turns out how you subsample the data and how many models you're using and what type of models are these. Um, it really depends upon that bagging uh, in theory will, over, will, will avoid overfitting or not. Uh, in theory, it is hard to explain that uh, in, in general settings, no matter what models you choose, no matter how many models are choose, or in general, no matter how the way of subsampling uh, for different, the way of subsampling different bags, if all these things are in general, then bagging uh, cannot be proven to, to avoid overfitting. But in practice, in so many settings, so many fruitful or good settings, bagging works really very well. Um, is there any famous algorithm that um, the bagging actually used? Yes, random forest. Both random forest classifier and random forest um, regression. What it does is it actually uses the, the different decision trees as the base models. A decision tree is whether it's doing a classification or regression, it uses different trees randomly built on random data sets and several of these trees. And then eventually it actually get the votes of all these kind of trees together. Um, 
by the way if you if you really want to know uh, about different kind of classification schemes a detailed overview of overfitting and logistic regression and stuff like so uh, please uh, go through the description link go through the link um, in the description of this video uh, we have our channel and we have explained uh, most of these uh, concepts in a bit more detail uh, on YouTube as well as um, the courses on uh, different other platforms of AI sciences. So uh, the scene, uh, this random forest is really uh, an example of bagging and it is really a robust classifier um, and regression model for several of the, for several, um, of the data sets and sometimes the very good choice for combining different kind of uh, models. Let's go to Python and just uh, go through one of the examples for this random forest. So here I'm going to actually, uh, I'm loading the iris data. Iris data has four features and one target. The total number of targets are just three. Um, the feature, features are four um, and the total number of targets are, are three. I split the data to convert the data into training and test sets uh, just to make sure that um, I'm training on a different set and, and evaluating on a different set. Then uh, from scikit-learn.ensemble, I can import this random forest classifier and I can just call the random forest classifier uh, function um, or, or constructor um, by giving the number of decision trees I want to use. So here I'm using 100 decision trees um, called n estimators. Um, then I call the spit function that actually trains the model and then I gather the predictions on my test data. So let's see. Now it those. Next, let's check the accuracy of the model using the accuracy metric. That's the true predictions on the test data and these are the predictions that are made by our model. So in this particular case, the accuracy is pretty great. That's 97% on unseen data. Awesome. So that's about bagging um, uh, technique uh, in, the, in the umbrella of ensemble learning. Um, we also have uh, videos on other ensemble learning techniques, famous ensemble learning techniques like boosting and stacking on the same channel. So please uh, subscribe to our channel, like this video and share this video um, among your friends. Hope to see you next time.